the light bringer. I'm the fucking universe. Resident Evil and Silent Hill may be the most recognisable survival horror series, but there's a good chance they owe that legacy to the standard set by Alone in the Dark all the way back in 1992. Trapped in a haunted mansion, if the player wants to escape with their life, they'll need to use their wits to solve puzzles and outsmart countless nasty monsters. Despite being considered a classic, the series never really took off in the same way that Resi and Silent Hill did. Regardless of the two sequels and a reboot in 2001, it seemed Alone was destined to stay in the dark. That was until 2008 when they tried to revive the- yeah, it's really bad, it's a bad game, it's a really, really bad game. The Alone in the Dark remake was actually the second game I ever played on the Xbox 360. So this was one of the games that introduced me to the concept of next gen. In case you were wondering, the other one was the Turok reboot. Even back then, I could tell that Alone in the Dark was a shoddy, broken mess. And eventually, when I got tired of working through the game's mediocre offerings, I discovered the game had a feature that let the player jump around to certain points in the game. Kind of like a chapter select, but with a DVD aesthetic for uh, relevancy reasons. By using the skip feature, I got to jump all the way to the last section of the game. And what I found was a semi-open area that totally put the rest of the Alone in the Dark remake to shame. For reasons no one cares about, the protagonist needs to get underneath a castle in Central Park. Unfortunately for, I think his name's Edward, the castle is blocked by magic demon stuff. And since Spider-Man's not there to lend him a hand, he needs to search the area for all the evil roots that are causing the castle's entrance to be blocked. I must have spent hours in this section of the game. You know the cool feeling of exploration you get when scavenging a side area in Metrum? It's basically like that, but an entire Central Park's worth. I will never forget trying to quickly hotwire a car while hoping I don't get grabbed by some demon. Take my word for it, it was really tense. As a matter of fact, everything that takes part in this section is tense. And in a game that's mostly trash, it was a genuine joy to find myself loving this part of Alone in the Dark. It's a shame it's hidden so close to the end. I guess the DVD style skip feature makes sense now. If you've not given this game a go before, I do not recommend you go back and play it. It's not a good game by any stretch. But if you happen to already own the game, and you want to jump into something completely random in the hope of finding some hidden gem, it's easily worth an afternoon. Thanks for watching this little quick one, guys. Did you play Alone in the Dark back in 2008? What did you think of it? Did you think it was trash? Please let us know. And I hate to ask, but if you could leave a like or a subscribe, that would really help us out.